in a place and stop using your words. Not just a black people thing, but a people thing. Solomon Jones is with me. He is radio host for Philadelphia's Praise 107.9. Uh, Solomon, thank you so much. I know this has been a huge, huge topic for you on your show. Thanks for joining me. Yes, it has. Yes, thanks for having me, Brooke. Appreciate it. You got it. Uh, you know, listen, the thing that a lot jumped out at me listening to the interview with Robin this morning, but, but you know, in that interview, like two minutes from when those guys sat down to when the manager called 911. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. It, it really uh, just reminds me of so many other incidents that have turned out worse than this one. Tamir Rice, uh, the police officers pull up and, and in a matter of seconds they, they shoot that little boy for playing with a toy gun. Uh, in this case, two minutes. Uh, they show up and the men say in that interview that they didn't even know why the police were there, that they were saying to themselves, well, they can't be here for us because nobody's told us anything. And suddenly there are six police officers surrounding them. It really mm -hmm. is a case of racial profiling in a neighborhood, Rittenhouse Square, that is a very rich neighborhood, a very white neighborhood, where we've had problems with stop and frisk, where only 3% of the people in that neighborhood are black, and yet 67% of those who are stopped by police in that neighborhood are black. And so this is an ongoing problem, and hopefully this is the beginning of some solutions, not only for this situation, but as Dante Robinson said, for many others like it. Uh, on the solution piece, Solomon, we know that the Starbucks CEO has met with these two men. He has apologized face to face. He has called this reprehensible. We know they're shutting down 8,000 Starbucks stores at the end of May for, for racial bias training. Is that enough? Yeah. No, because they need to be shutting down the stores now for racial bias training. Uh, you know, we've seen other videos where a white person was led into the restroom without buying anything, given the code, and a black person right behind him was not let into the restroom. So this is an ongoing problem, not just at Starbucks, but I think in many places where black people are profiled. And so until such time that we know that uh, this manager is gone and will never come back, um, until such time that we know that the racial bias training has been done, until such time that we know that black people have pro been promoted into positions of management where they can make decisions around uh, who goes, who stays, who gets in the bathroom, etc. Uh, I will not be satisfied. And I've been going to Starbucks for years, but I will be boycotting um, until such time that these conditions are met. You, you close your, your whole piece in the Philadelphia Na Daily News by writing, until Starbucks commits to treating my brothers like whole persons, I will boycott every one of their stores. You, know, you talk about putting people of co color in managerial positions. You know, I was looking at some of the numbers today. Starbucks touts its diversity. They say 66% of their workers are women and that 43% are, are minorities. Is Solomon, is boycotting a company where a number, number of their workers are people of color, are women, um, is boycotting the most effective way to express your displeasure? I think in a capitalistic society, boycotting is always the most effective way to, uh, to express your displeasure because when you can hit a company's bottom line, then, then that is a message that goes beyond just words, beyond just protests. Uh, it affects the company, and so I think it's always effective. But let me say this, that the way that systemic racism works is sort of like a chess game. Uh, no matter whether the piece is black or whether the piece is white, if it's a knight, it can only move in an L shape. If it's a bishop, it can only move diagonally. And so it doesn't matter if you have people in position that look like me, if the only thing that they can do is work within a system that is in itself racist. And so Starbucks needs to be having that training now uh, because apparently it is not working to have just people in positions where they can only do what the company policies, spoken and unspoken, say that they can do. Solomon Jones, thank you for your voice. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Coming up next, President Trump threatens to walk out of his meeting with Kim Jong-un if it doesn't go well, if it's not his word fruitful. This, as North Korea reportedly makes a major concession before those talks, we'll get into that. Uh, also, anytime the president speaks to reporters, it's always, uh, shall we say, a surreal experience. Chris Eliza is up. He, he's analyzing the patterns from a Trump news conference. Keith and Melissa live next to Melissa's parents. And when it was clear living 30 feet away had to change to living 3,000 miles away, they made the right move and called Pods. So did their not-so-new neighbors. Pods, the right move for your move.
Casual Friday. What does that even mean? Collar? No collar? Tucked? Untucked? Maybe I'm 